Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio Detectives, where we bring to you tales from the greatest detective shows the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 463 episodes made, broadcast on CBS Radio from 1942 to 1955, we bring to you The Whistler. Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Death Watch. I am The Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Did you ever commit a murder? No? Then you don't know, do you, how irresistible is the urge of the murderer to return to the scene of his crime. It's a very overpowering feeling. Especially if you're not even sure that... Oh, but wait, I'm getting ahead of the story. They found Lucille Doan late at night, on the floor of a not-too-lavish apartment. A neighbor noticed a light that had been burning for 24 hours, blundered in, and found her. The police came very quickly. The coroner arrived shortly after. And he and Detective Rock Adrian looked over the body. Well, coroner, what do you say? Mr. Adrian, she's dead. Plenty dead. Cause of death? Do I have to tell you? You can see I can see, but I want your official verdict for the record. Well, you can put down death from repeated blows over the head by a heavy instrument. How many is repeated blows? Twenty, twenty-five at least. How old would you say she was? I'd say around thirty. Would you say she was pretty? Beautiful? She was certainly better looking than she is now. Why worry? The papers will headline her as a raving beauty. The newspapers won't hear about this case yet. Time of death? Oh, I'd say about this time last night. Well, I guess I got everything I need from you. Go ahead if you're through. I am, and glad of it. This isn't my favorite kind of case. You coming? No, 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 not just yet. And, uh, Karna. Yeah? Don't talk about this to anyone, especially reporters. Right. Say, so you got any ideas on this one, Mr. Adrian? Uh, nothing much. But I don't think the murderer of Lucille Doan is sleeping peacefully tonight. Well, I don't blame him. I wouldn't either if I'd done something like that. Yes, and how right you are. The murderer of Lucille Doan is not sleeping peacefully tonight. Is he, Oliver? No, Oliver Gorst is walking the streets, wandering aimlessly, paying little attention to traffic, thinking, thinking. Uh, uh. Hey, hey, why don't you look where you're going? What's the idea? Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't thinking. I, I mean, I was thinking about something else. I'm sorry. Hey, are you all right? You don't look so good. I'm all right. There's nothing the matter with me. Stop staring at me. I'm all right. Okay, brother, Okay. You better watch out where you're going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Watch where I'm going. Watch. Where am I going? I started toward home, but I'm walking downtown. I I am almost to Lucille's place. No, no, I can't do it. I I can't go back there. Not now. But why do I keep walking in that direction? Why? Why? Why?
Yes, why, Oliver? Why this irresistible desire to go back to the scene of the crime, as they call it? Seems to get worse all the time, doesn't it? It's almost a quarter to twelve, just twenty-four hours since you killed her. Now you want to go back. But that's dangerous, you know that. The police might be there right now, gathering clues. Then they'll peer through microscopes, test things, interview people, and soon they'll be combing the city for you. The murderer returns to the scene of the crime. If that's true, then why don't the police just wait there for them? Maybe they are. Maybe they're waiting there for me right now. I mean, I, I've got to be careful. I'm almost there. I, I can't go. I can't. It, it's suicide. <laughs> Here's a timely little gift offer for all you Whistler fans who drive cars. You see, July 1st, that's next Sunday, is the deadline for getting the new federal use stamp on your windshield. Well, since that little stamp has to hang on through a whole year of wear and window washing, you certainly don't want to have it peel or scuff off around the edges. So Signal Oil Company has had some special transparent use stamp protectors made up. They're neat looking, they're easy to apply, and they're free. Yours for the asking at any Signal gasoline dealer. Of course, like everything in wartime, supplies are limited, and every car will be needing one, so I'd suggest that you get yours this week. Just drive into any of the friendly stations displaying Signal's yellow and black circle sign and say, I'd like one of Signal's use stamp protectors that was offered free on the Whistler. And now, back to the Whistler. Oliver Gorst, you can tell yourself that it's suicide to go back to the scene of your crime. But you can't stop that irresistible desire to go anyway, can you? Your head tells you to turn around and run, but your feet take you closer and closer. You'd better be careful, Oliver. You'd better be careful. Where the devil's a switch? Hey, anyone here? Hello, Inspector. They told me I'd find you here, Adrian. What's up? The idea of camping here and not letting the newspapers have the story. Not so loud, Inspector. Close the door. Yeah. I've got a hunch about this crime. I'm listening. Better be good. Where's Arnold and Henderson? Not sleeping. Sleeping? And just what do you do while they slumber? Wait. We take turns. For what? The murderer. I don't get it. Whoever killed Lucille Doan did it in a moment of blind fury and then rushed out of here thinking only of escape. Mm. Only then did he realize what he'd done. Now he's bound to have the jitters. Every time he picks up a newspaper, he expects to read about the crime. If we keep this thing still, our silence will puzzle him. We begin to wonder whether the police have discovered the body. He might come back for any number of reasons. But I think he'll come back lured by all the doubts and hopes and curiosity... A silence can stir up in the mind of one who's come face to face with murder for the first time. Murder's very upsetting, you know. Yeah, especially for the victim. Well, all right, Adrian, go ahead. Some of your wacky ideas have been your most successful ones. And I'll string along, but don't take too long. Thank you, Inspector. I'll take care of the chief in the newspapers. Good night and good luck. The detective has a hunch, Oliver, and it's a pretty good one. Of course, you don't know it, but he's figured you out pretty well. Except, when you committed murder, you were more surprised than upset. Yes, you couldn't believe you'd done it. You wanted to go back and convince yourself right then. But something told you not to. Instead, you ate a big supper. Murder made you terribly hungry. There was nothing like a good meal to buck a man up. Only now you wish you had gone back, don't you? Just to make sure. Maybe I... Maybe I didn't do it after all. Maybe it's something I dreamed. I've often thought of killing someone. No. Of killing her when she was causing so much trouble. That's it. 
I dreamed of killing her, and the dream was so vivid, I thought it actually happened. I have to go back to convince myself it isn't true. <laughs> She'll be surprised to see me so soon after our quarrel. I'll look around, and if I don't see any blood stains, I'll know it didn't happen. But why can't a man be sure about something like that? It's such an awful thing to do. Kill a human being. I couldn't have done it. I'd feel remorse. I, I'd have such a sense of guilt, I'd have to give myself up or, or drown myself. It goes to show I didn't do it. How could I have eaten that meal afterwards if I'd killed her? The food would have choked me. But I'm hungry again. I'll stop for a sandwich. That'll give me time to think. Anderson. Anderson, wake up. <clears throat> what? Oh, oh, it's you. Time for your watch. Here's some coffee. More in the thermos. Oh, thanks. Look, do you really think we'll trap this guy... Well, it seems to me I've been here a month already. I'm playing a hunch, that's all. I, I could be wrong. Well, much more of this, and we'll be chasing each other around with butcher knives for diversion. Don't worry, Henderson. The idea is not as crazy as it sounds. Okay, Mr. Adrian. Wake me if you hear the slightest sound, will you? Yeah. Good night. Good night, and pleasant dreams. <laughs> else for you, mister? Uh, what did you say? I said, would you like anything else? Oh, uh, well, well, yes, I think I'll have another hamburger. Well, I'm sorry, but the chef's gone. Oh. All we have is coffee and cold sandwiches. We'll be closed in about 20 minutes. Well, I'll, I'll have a cup of coffee. Okay, draw one. I wonder if he ever killed anyone. I wish I was in his place. Nothing to worry about. Lucille deserved to die. I had to do it. It's not my fault. She fell in love with me, and I warned her not to, that I could never marry her. She understood all that. It's foolish to come all the way down here just to prove I wasn't dreaming. I'll call her up. I'll be pleasant and tell her I'm sorry about the quarrel and cheer her up a little. Hey, mister, don't you want the coffee? Huh? Oh, yes, uh, I'll be back. I'm just going to telephone No. Don't touch that receiver, Henderson. Oh, well, it might be headquarters. No. I'm not to be called here. I left instructions with the operator to trace any call that comes in. I'll try to stall anyone who calls. Let it ring. What number are you calling, please? Uh, Lincoln 57431, please. Will you please hang up and dial again? I'm returning your coin. Sorry, mister, we're closing up. There's a drugstore up the street where you can telephone. It's no use. She didn't answer. No, Oliver, she didn't answer. And you know why, don't you? Really, you know why. But you don't know about Detective Rock Adrian and the operator tracing the call, do you? Hold it. Sorry, I'm closing. It's place around, up around the corner. Never mind that. Did anyone telephone from here within the last five minutes? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, a man just left. Went down the subway steps over there. Okay, Henderson, bring this man with you and come on. Can you identify him? Sure I can. He just ate here. Why, what's the matter? Never mind. Come on. We better catch him before that train pulls out. Wait a minute. I'm afraid we're too late. Well, Oliver, you were lucky, and you don't even know it. Sitting safely in the subway train, your thoughts are far from police in your danger. They're with Lucille. Why didn't she answer? Maybe she was out with someone else. 
And all the time telling me I was the only one she ever loved. Couldn't live without me. If I ever left her, she'd kill herself. Well, why didn't she? That would have solved everything. Always threatening to tell my wife. Always demanding. Threatening and demanding. Demanding and threatening. Every time I saw her, there was a big row. I began to lose my control, my, my self-respect. And then... Then I knew I'd have to kill her. That's when I started having those horrible dreams. Then I... I dreamed she was a little white mouse and asked me to give her something to eat. But I told her I hadn't anything. Then I saw my heart on a little tin plate and she began to nibble on it. The heart was pulsing. And when she bit into it, I screamed and grabbed the poker and began to beat her with it. Beat her and beat her long after she was dead. All out, end of the line. All out, mister. This is the end of the line. A- end of the line? Where am I? 242nd Street. Can I ride anymore? Sure, mister. You want to go back? We'll take you. Back? Yeah. I've got to go back. I forgot something back there. Yes, Oliver, you forgot something. Or did you? You can't be sure about anything anymore. The whole thing's like a dream, a nightmare. Only you can't seem to wake up. When you go home, finally, you avoid your wife. You've done it before. She doesn't bother you. At the office next day, the people wonder about you, but they only think you're not feeling well. If they only knew what's going on in your mind. And then it's night again. You're wandering the streets again. The urge to go back is there again. Oh, this job ain't so bad after you get used to it, Mr. Adrian. I've not a happen tonight. Oh, you think so? He's hovering around the edges. That call came from a phone booth only three blocks from here. We almost had him. Yeah, that was a tough break. Quiet. Someone's coming. I hear it. He's coming this way. Stand by. Be ready for trouble. What'll I do? Open the door. Fast. Put up your hands. Y- yeah, yeah, sure, mister. Don't shoot. I- I'm just delivering a telegram. All right. Come in. Who's the message for? Uh, Miss Lucille Doan. I'll take it. You wait. Hmm. Where'd you get this? Came through the office. Boss just handed it to me and told me to deliver it. Here's, um, here's two bucks. If anyone asked you about this telegram telling you delivered it to Miss Doan in person... Not to me, see? Yes, sir. Say, can I tell my boss what happened? Yeah. Tell him if anyone tries to put a tracer on this telegram to find out if it was delivered, he's to get in touch with police headquarters. Yes, sir, I'll tell him. Thanks for the two bucks. That's all. Well, what's up? Read this telegram. Meet me for dinner at the usual place, signed Ollie. Who the devil is Ollie? That's our man. The one who phoned. The murderer? Perhaps. Well, dining with a corpse would be a novelty. Look, if he's the one, what's the point in inviting her to dinner? Maybe it's hope. Maybe he's trying to convince himself it never happened. Maybe it's an attempt to fool the police in case he's found and questioned. Well, if we only knew where the usual place was, we'd drop in for dinner ourselves. This Ollie doesn't know she's dead. If he isn't our man, he'll probably try to find out why she doesn't meet him. We'll just sit tight. Oh, no, not more waiting. Well, I think I'll water the plants again. That geranium's going to blossom any week now. Waiter. Yes, sir? Uh, What time is it? 10.15. Can I get you something? No, no, I'll wait a little longer. My companion must, must have been detained. She'll be along any minute now. I'd suggest, sir, if you want steak, you better let me place your order. We have only a few left. Well, I I don't know. Uh, she eats so little. I, I tell you what, reserve one steak. If she orders it, I'll take something else. Very well, I'll have one put aside. And uh, bring me another newspaper. Yes, sir. Why did I tell him only one steak? We both like them better than anything else. Maybe, maybe I know she won't come. Is this just a game I'm playing with myself, just pretending it never happened? But why? Why isn't there something in the papers? I've read a hundred since Monday, and all there is is war news. Nothing about... 
Ah, she's staying away on purpose, just to torture me. She knows how easily I become upset and worried. She's deliberately not answering my phone call and my telegram. Just like her to pull a trick like that. Like the time she faked a suicide and had me frantic for a week. Well, two can play that game. I'm not waiting any longer. Waiter. Yes, sir. I'll have the steak by myself. Medium rare. Baked potato. Green salad with French dressing. That's right, Oliver. Get angry at her. That will relieve the tension in your mind for a while. Eat a good meal. Go home. Get a good night's sleep. You'll feel better in the morning. But you don't, do you? And the next night, you're worse than ever. Take it easy, Oliver. You can just wait a little while longer. Detective Adrian can't keep this up forever. Adrian, I can't put the chief off much longer. He's howling for an arrest. We'll get him, Inspector. He's nibbling at the bait. Yeah, but when? It's three days since the murder. That's not long. Just give me a few more days. Days? Good Lord, the chief wants to see me the first thing in the morning. And I know what he'll say. Uh, I can guess. I'll give me one more day. I'm sure something will break. Well, I'll try. I'll tell him you got a hot lead. The case will soon break. Thanks, Inspector. Oh, forget it. And let me warn you, Adrian, this is the last time I get involved with you and your hunches. This kind of detective work is too hard on the nerves. I'm a wreck. And my wife's complaining. But just think what state of mind the murderer must be in. Oh, Lord. What I wouldn't give for a night of quiet, undreaming sleep. I'm a sick man. Maybe I ought to go to the doctor. But I'm afraid. Afraid of what I might tell him. I have so many things in my conscience. There's only one person in all the universe who can help me. That's Lucille. I can't fight anymore. I've got to go to her. Oliver, you're going to give up. You knew you'd have to sooner or later. Yes, the murderer returns to the scene of a crime, and you can't help yourself. You may be caught, but you don't care anymore. Too bad. You will be caught, of course, because Detective Rock Adrian is still there, waiting for you like a spider waiting for a fly. But he's not happy. I've got good news for you, Anderson. Well, you don't sound very happy. This will be the last watch. You sure? Positive. When's he coming? The chief's called it off. Oh. Tomorrow the papers get the story and we start a routine hunt. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Now, I was getting used to this retired life. I wanted it to last until that geranium bloomed. Without me, it would have died. Take it home as a souvenir. A trophy of the chase. See, Oliver, if you could only wait until tomorrow. But you can't, can you? You're going back to Lucille right now, and nothing can stop you. It's better to be caught and hanged than to have this doubt eating into my mind. I just sit at the office, my brain vibrating with every telephone call. It can't go on. Tonight I'll know. And then I can get some sleep again. And right now, that's the sweetest, most desirable experience in all the world. Oh, here's that coffee shop. I, I got this far the other night. I'll stop in and then go on. Now, what's yours? Uh, coffee. I guess I'll have a roll, too. Uh-huh. Draw one. Hey, mister... You were in here the other night, weren't you? Oh, yes, I... I guess I was. Uh, you made a phone call, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, I remember. Well, you look like a pretty good guy. I'll give you a tip. I don't know what's up, but right after you left, the cops were here and wanted to know who called. Then they beat it right down to the subway, but your train was just pulling out. Now, as I the said... Police. Yeah, and they seemed anxious. Just thought I'd tip you off. Thanks, I... I gotta get out of here. They're after me. It's true. I killed her and they're after me. I gotta get away. To Mexico, anywhere. They don't know who I am yet. I can make it. 
If I hurry, I can get away. Taxi! Taxi! In just a moment, the Whistler will bring you the strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, I'd like to tell you about the happy ending that more and more drivers are finding in their quest to make ration gasoline go farther. Now, if you think I'm going to say signal go farther gasoline, well, you're right. Well, after all, friends, what could be a more logical place to look for mileage than to the gasoline that for years has been famed for mileage? You see, each oil company has its own formula for its own brand of gasoline. Well, long before the war, when economy was still the important thing, Signal Oil Company set out to produce a gasoline formula that would give more miles. Today, of course, with certain gasoline ingredients reserved for war, no gasoline can promise you all the brilliant anti-knock performance you enjoyed in pre-war Signal gasoline, and which you'll find again in even further improved Signal post-war gasoline. But here's the important point. Even today, Signal's wartime formula still puts the emphasis on mileage. That's why if you haven't tried Signal Go Farther Gasoline in your car, there never was a better reason or a better time to get acquainted with your Signal gasoline dealer. And now, back to the Whistler. Well, Oliver Gorst, by a stroke of luck, you found out. At last, your mind is relieved. Or so you think. At last, you know you did kill Lucille. It wasn't a dream. No, the police are after you. But you found out in time. You can get away. As long as the police don't know who you are, you can just go home and pack your bag, buy a ticket, and go away. Nobody will ever know. And those policemen sitting back there in Lucille's apartment can wait till doomsday for you. Your move. Well, thanks. You know, I got you licked. Sure, sure. But I like to take my time about giving up. <laughs> I'm sure glad I'm not playing you for dough. Yeah. Hey, did you hear that? Elevator. Stop at this floor. He's coming this way. Get ready. Don't make a sound. Why did it ring? I'll open it. You stand by. Oh. Oh, I thought... Come in. Well, I'm looking for a Miss Doan. This is Miss Doan's apartment. Well, is Miss Doan here? I'd like to speak to her privately. She's not in just now. May I ask who you are? It it doesn't matter. I'll I'll call some other time. I'm sorry, but we're interested in Miss Doan, too. I'm Detective Adrian from police headquarters. Police? Is Miss Doan involved with the police? Very much so. Well, I'm glad... It's about time the police took care of women like that. Breaking up homes, stealing my husband. I found her address in my husband's letter file. I came here to tell her that if she didn't leave him alone, I'd call in the police myself. Your name, please? I'm Mrs. Gorse. Mrs. Oliver Gorse. And I want to tell you that I Your address? 30 Western Street. As I was saying, Oliver and I were quite happy until this woman came along. What's the matter? Here they are, Mr. Adrian. Hello, Inspector. This is Rock Adrian. Have Oliver Gorse, 30 Weston Street, picked up for questioning? Yeah. For the murder of Lucille Doan. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program is directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Joseph Cochran and music by Wilbur Hatch and is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with Signal Gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with Signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.